Hello and what's up guys? This is a portable inverter welding machine that we will fix today. This is also one of those that I powder coated the case. So wait till the end and you will see the transformation later. This is a dead unit and will trip the house circuit breaker when this thing is turned on. In this case, our first suspect are the IGBTs. You can see that the manufacturer covered the IGBT terminals with some kind of insulating sealant. I have to remove those to test the IGBTs. I labeled the IGBT terminals on this board so you can easily follow the testing that I will do using the diode check function of the multimeter. I checked the collector to emitter junction and they are shorted. Normally, we should be getting diode voltage between the collector and the emitter. The gate to collector is also shorted. This IGBT is definitely broken. The other IGBT is no different. Shorted all pins. I already done a lot of videos in the past with the broken IGBTs and it is a common faulty item with this cheap inverter welder. Next, I will usually check the fast recovery diodes over here. With my black probe at the cathode and red on the anode, we should be getting the diode forward bias voltage. But here, it is shorted. Even if we interchange the black and red probes. When I check the other diode, it seems to be the same shorted condition. I removed one of the fast recovery diodes out of the board so that we can properly test them separately. You can see here that the remaining diode in the board is still in good condition, not shorted. So when you find a shorted fast recovery diode in the board, you have to pull it out to accurately test which one is shorted. It is possible like what we have here that only one of the two diodes is broken and needs replacement. With the IGBT and fast recovery diodes removed, we can test the other functional blocks of the board. When I plug it in, the fan works. That kind of tells us that the auxiliary power supply is working. Using a voltmeter, I check to see if there are the 24 volts and 15 volts output. You can see that I probe my test leads to the cathode of the two rectifier diodes right next to the auxiliary power supply transformer. And uh, that is where we can check the output of the auxiliary power supply. Next, I will check if there is output signal from the PWM controller. Using a voltmeter, you can test the output of these two MOSFET ICs. You can see the pins number 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all connected. That is where we want to test the voltage reference to ground. So the output of the two MOSFET ICs provide the AC signal to the gate drive transformer over there. Normal voltage is about 6 to 8 volts, like this one. If I probe those output with an oscilloscope, you will see that it is a square wave output with amplitude of about 15 volts. The voltage read by the voltmeter is the average DC voltage. That is why it is about 6 to 8 volts which is halfway the 15 volts BCC. Whenever the IGBT is broken, you always want to check the components of the gate drive circuit. There are resistors, diodes, and a few capacitors that sometimes get burned out together with the IGBT. Fortunately for this board, they all look fine. I am now replacing the new IGBT and fast recovery diodes. 
By the way, I have the circuit diagram for for this kind of single board inverter welder. Just leave in a comment if you want to get a copy. With the new fast recovery diode, I can show you the normal expected test results. With the black probe at the cathode and red at the anode, we are getting the forward bias voltage. And with the red probe at the cathode and black on the anode, we are getting OL or open lead. This is the normal reading for a good diode. For this board, I just replaced the two IGBTs and fast recovery diode and that fixed this inverter welder. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is one of the inverter welding machine cases that I powder coated using my homemade powder coating equipment. Make sure to watch my videos about my homemade powder coating setup and you may find those interesting as well. So now I am testing the inverter welder after the repair and repainting the cases. It is now working normally. And this is the finished work. Aside from the repair, I also refurbished the look of the machine. Be sure to follow or subscribe if you have not done yet. Hit the like button and leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you all.